All right, welcome to the Recruiter Startup Podcast. This is the first episode of 2022. And I'm joined today by Jimmy Minards. How are you today, sir? I'm very well, thank you, Dave. You doing all right? When was the last time somebody sang your name like that? <laughs> Mate, you are the, the, the first. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about sports before we come on there. They, they, they didn't sing your name in the, in the stands when you were playing rugby, no? No, no, no. Not in a nice way, if they, if they were. <laughs> so where, where are you based, Jimmy? So I'm uh, based in a, in, a, well, in a place called Mudgee uh, in uh, New South Wales, Australia. But um, I guess my client, my business is really sort of uh, mostly based in Sydney. The Recruiter Startup Podcast, very popular in that area, isn't it? Yeah, it is. In Mudgee or in Sydney? Mudgee. <laughs> <laughs> you like yeah, I'd be, I'd be the only, I reckon. Right? What was that? You live in the sticks. Like. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. But it's a nice... It's nice sticks. It's wine country, so it's uh, it's not all bad. Yeah, and the dream of remote working and all of that has kind of come true for you guys, hasn't it? It has. It has. I think um, it's a funny when you say the dream. It's um, it, there's because there's definitely some fantastic aspects of it, but there's also there's some challenges. And I think as you you know, it's almost careful what you wish for because man, I am missing people yeah. like um and i guess obviously the pandemic is obviously you know really sort of played into that but yeah i think as time goes by we'll see how we go and particularly with the business uh, that i want to grow whether you know the remote thing is the way to go i know obviously you're very you know pro that and that's you know it's working very well for you guys but i guess the the type of environment that we work in in australia and sydney is that it's you know it's very relationship based and, and very face to face when I visualize you in your life there, um, I, I can't kind of think about like, remember the TV show Flying Doctors? Where they're like, this is evil for your client. Like, having to get into these wee shaky planes to, to get like five hours flying into Sydney from the sticks. <laughs> oh my God, mate. We're showing your age there, but no, it's nothing like that. It's, um, but, I mean, there is actually, there is a, a, an airport in Mudgee and that uh, does fly to Sydney daily. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I've uh, opted to do the drive. And, and just stick on one of your podcasts, of course. You know, holding on. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been in a light plane before, though? No. It is a bit like that, mate. Yeah. It's, you know, it's it's fun, but it, Jesus, it's, yeah, it's 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 different. So we've uh, we've known each other for quite a while now. Um, my business has changed a lot and your your life has changed a lot. Mm. So it's, uh, it's, I thought it would be good to get you on here now because I think you, you might have been one of the earlier people who joined the WhatsApp group, the dinghy. How, how did all that come Yeah, up? quite interesting, right? So I guess um, I, I found, I kind of like through a mutual connection actually on LinkedIn is how I came about and found you and reached out to you um, after listening to one of your podcasts. But I'd sort of started listening to podcasts one day after work about recruitment because a bit of a background for me is that I've never been a recruiter before I started up my business a year ago, right? So I, still, I, I now service the industry that I've worked in for a long time, but I've had this kind of like desire to do it for some time. I'd, I'd asked a few people over the years um, that sort of serviced our industry and, and thought about it, and it sort of never really just felt like the right time or comfortable. I actually set up my business, like registered beginning of 2019, but it wasn't until I think of July of 2020 that I'd listened to a couple of your podcasts through a lady who referred you who had you had actually been on your podcast and then reached out to you. You said, "Hey, I've got this thing here." I'm like, "Okay, cool," because I was just trying to like be a bit of a sponge for recruitment because it's not something that I was I had an idea of it, never been you know working in it, so I wanted to just understand it more. And yeah, mate, just sort of like you invited me, and, and it was just sort of like I don't know how many people were back then, but it was pretty good. It was still you know like a bit hit and miss, but then it was also through timing, mate, that I think you introduced the mastermind and, mate, it was just pure time. I think on a Saturday or something, I looked at you, put it up, and, you know, I'm obviously how many hours ahead of you or behind you or whatever, <laughs> and I was just lucky enough to sort of just go, hey, I'm, 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 I'm interested. Yeah, and, and that's... So for, for us, it was, uh, it was interesting because we, we didn't have an actual course then, so I was like, okay, I need to get all this stuff that I've learned out of my head and into a format. So I was like, okay, six years, like first six to put up, we'll go through it all. And then six people did. And I think 
you're probably the only one without recruitment experience out of the group. Yeah, right? yeah, I was, and it would, it showed. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how, did that, how did that feel? <laughs> <laughs> oh mate i must admit the first couple of times we met up and i like i've never really sort of i guess uh with andy as well because he did a couple but i guess i've never really had much time with andy but i i, I think it was the first or second one we had it i just felt like andy was going who's this who's, you know this guy's just a waste of space and but it, it felt i mean it was i was excited but i was nervous yeah um and, and just mate i guess you know we've talked about it before but just that feeling of bit of imposter syndrome i guess and really just sort of a bit out of my depth yeah i probably had a bit of imposter syndrome like take like taking the sessions at the time and you know my my wife charlotte she's like you're dropping the ball in our own practice and you're coaching people and i was like look trust me i'm on to i'm on to something here I, you just need mm. to let me follow through with this and she she was breaking my balls i mean it was then I, I said, why don't you come in and kind of just do a nice session on operations or virtual assistance, something like that. She did it and she went, this is amazing. And I was like, okay, right, great. Um, so once I got her buy-in on it, I was like, great. Because we recorded, we recorded the sessions because I wanted to be able to go to marketing and get a format out of it. Mm. And then we structured and restructured. We're on Mastermind 11 now. So, oh my gosh, and yeah, it's probably also a very different um, it's you know, iteration it's, to what it was. Yeah, it's it's just a lot sharper. So, I think like we're a lot more like so we've got the format down pretty good. Like so, because like we're like okay, so what's really important to people, and then we kind of reshuffled the, the different orders of stuff. So like people like more like scaling and building their team a little bit earlier. Mm. And in the VA straight away and people like they need their operations straight away and then I was like I'm not making people accountable enough so I, I put in a real load of accountabilities in the the first session and then the next bit is all about the marketing and all of that once you get all of that done so it's uh and every time so we've, I, I suppose when you've coached 11 groups of people you're gonna get some people in it who are better at topics than you are not happens mm. And I'm and I'm 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 cool about that, like because you come in and you're better than me at reverse marketing or mar marketing mm. uh, yep. or a retainer or some type of automation or whatever it is. I'll be like, brilliant. Let's process document that, right? Now that goes in the course for next time, and that's allowed us to yeah. build, build it, build it, build it. So last week we got it, or two weeks ago we had the guys from Peak Creative come down, and we recorded it all in course format then no it'll just it'll be much more like a real educational platform rather than the wildness of mastermind one so yeah. <laughs> but it, you know it's it's obviously it's great to see i mean mastermind 11 that's the, like that's a fantastic feat right and yeah. i guess from an idea and and it becoming what it is now is great and it will continue to evolve by the sounds of it the natural evolution is that charlotte's now doing like much bigger business advisory so like any anybody who's like got over 15 heads billing up to like 50 and then want somebody to come in and go like fix my processes or my management or like my my learning and development or my ta yeah so, yeah okay do a program of work and and i kind of could see that as a natural evolution but it's uh but it's really it's really taken her off on it so no it's been it's been cool but i remember I remember early times in your business, eh? This happens to, like, you had your job and you had your mm -hmm. recruitment company. And I wasn't sure which one was going to win the war at those early stages because there were moments when it was like, you just, you hadn't really fully committed to it. What, no, no. what was the what was the bit in your early, because I'm sure there's, there's going to be somebody listening. I don't have a lot, like, who doesn't have a lot of recruitment experience, who does have financial commitments, you have kids, you have a mortgage, you like you're trying to make this life change you're kind of doing that but as you know you have to be all in to make the real money how how did you make that decision like what was like so i guess like to step back it's probably been many years where there has been a desire for me to to really do my own business and, and it to be you know to do it well 
So that's always been a burning fire and I've always been a really good ideas, man. Uh, application, shocking, right? Like that you pull the trigger up. and I just don't, I hit a hurdle and I just, I would fall over or I just, you know, I just freeze or, or whatever it be. I guess when the mastermind uh, started and I was currently working, as you say, like I had a full-time job uh, working with a large insurance company and have been doing that, you know, those similar types of roles for, for donkeys. And I guess knowing that it probably would be continue to do that. And it was, a, you know, I had that, that safety net ongoing and we're in the mastermind. And we, I guess you talk about the, or reference the accountability. We were trying to do some of that mastermind one. And one of the things I'd said, it was, was referencing that I was going to step away from my job and, and do this properly. And I guess in comparison, maybe the time it was probably a bit, a bit outlandish um, and having not even discussed that with my wife, at the time, like she was definitely aware that it, there was something building, but the reality of me stepping away from, you know, a decent salary and considering our financial commitments, we were actually like, we'd sold a house, like from a, that we had run as part of a business uh, in Mudgee, funnily enough, to fund our first home. And then I wanted to spend that money to start my own business. So in short, there was a lot building with some courage. And through that, literally that, that off the cuff comment I made was probably a bit of the tipping of the accountability. And then I think being in around like-minded people really helped. So having, having that, you know, talking to you guys every, was every week for 12 weeks, just the guys in Mastermind, one that I'm still in contact with and just going, hey, I'm doing this or that. And, you know, because I was like, I was so green, you know, like, I, you know, I didn't want to ask questions because I just felt I was just an absolute idiot. We're talking like 101 recruitment. I just didn't understand. I had an understanding of the, what I thought the concept was, but the application, you know, no clue. It's a really interesting one. And I know, thankfully, uh, you've stayed on on our ongoing advisory. And I've put you in a group with other people who don't have, who have a lot of industry experience as opposed to a lot of recruitment experience. Yeah. One of the things I want to do is to start building out the detail of, of what that is. All the stuff that's obvious to me, but for you looking in at this brand new thing, I, I'm like, oh, our course is too high level for like for some. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just like there, there's probably, and this is where shall probably be very um, effective through just like really trying to drill out that process because it is basically a one-on-one or a basics of recruitment. And I think like basically for me to really take that leap, it was, you know, talking to other people, in, you know, really understanding it so that I could convince myself that I was trying to, I was effectively making what, you know, loosely a family based decision, mm. you know, and, and thinking about the risk and whatnot. I mean, I had the money in the bank for a certain amount of time. How much? But, how, much how much time? Give us some numbers. So, so, how much money or how much? So, whatever you're comfortable with. Oh, I mean, listen, like we had over 100 grand in the bank. Um, awesome. Okay. So, that's, yeah. So, that, and that was for going towards the house deposit. Yeah. But I didn't get, I didn't earn money for, Oh my gosh, over six months. Like I left my job in December of 2020. I had my first placement fall through, I think in February, March. And then I didn't get the next one that got, was in May and got paid uh, the last day of the financial year in Australia, <laughs> which is like 13 grand. I, I think you know, I made 13 grand in that first six months. And there was like month five, I was like, we I, remember a- you, I remember you painting the fence. And yeah, I was building fences like I was doing like, library. You were like, Jimmy, um, get in on the ball. <laughs> Stop painting the fence. Like, but, I, but, but your head is gone, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. There was a real, yeah, there was a good four weeks or so. And I was, uh, I think just the pressure I've got, I probably haven't felt that weight on my shoulders ever, whereby I feel like, oh, fuck, I fucked up here. My wife's like, backed me. I'm not doing what I should. You know, I remember that conversation because the like, Dave and the other the guys from last time went just like everyone just went quiet and started laughing. He's going, What the fuck? You, sorry, what the hell are you no, doing? It, you know, no, and, and and I remember we like we grabbed you on a one on one basis for a couple of times as well after that. Mm, and we were like, yeah, and, and you just another, make these changes now, or th- it's back to the job. Like it was, yeah, exactly right. So it's just like I know that I'll see 100 grand sounds a lot of money, which it is, um, but that wasn't money that was supposed to be spent or not a great deal of it. And I'd sort of sold something to my wife effectively that, you know, we're really going to, we'll be fine. <laughs> Excuse me. And we weren't. Like it was just, you know, we had to, looking, I think we sold a caravan 
you know, which, you know, you know, we're probably going to sell at some point, but we're starting to like look at that. that. <laughs> anyway, it was just like, I, I guess, you know, through no, nothing, like you go back to what you say, like when I was building fences or whatever, like you've just got this activity, like just like you've got to just, you know, chip away. And I guess because I didn't know the, I wasn't confident while through what I was doing was the right thing at times. So I get, I don't know whether the, what I was doing, like chipping away and working was actually quality or not, you know, and that's, I guess, you know, bringing you guys on board and, you know, having that accountability, but the support, like all the infrastructure you've got, you know, like, you know, my VA to start today, you know, and just like reading through and going through that, that supported me and bring that person on board. You know, I didn't have you guys. I, it wouldn't have happened, basically. Yeah. What uh, what are the financial projections now? Just to, to obviously we talked about money to shed, uh, and then you had an epiphany that you couldn't paint fences and you had to do some work. And <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I had an epiphany, uh, i.e., like I was you know going to be divorced possibly. But um, I guess projections are looking pretty good. So if I look at the second half of last year, I mean numbers wise, we're you know we're around the hundred and eighty grand Australian uh, for the first six months. I guess I'm, you know, I'm trying to probably by the end of the financial year, which is end of June here, is probably around the 400,000. We'll see, obviously, with the VA, it's, you know, helping with some of the administration stuff and, you know, some sourcing. I think ultimately um, I'm probably going to bring other recruiters into the business this year. So maybe the 400,000 whilst obviously, yeah, that's, you know, turnover-wise, it's, you know, that's not money in my pocket by any means. But, no, of um, course. So the, with that initial 50 that you invested, were you able mm. to pay that back into the family trust? Yes, yeah, 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 I was. So, and that that happened, you know what, in October. Nice. And so that was, um, yeah, yeah five cool. months from feeling like rock bottom, five months, obviously a pretty short time. And yeah. that was a pretty amazing feeling. So you're making me feel like, give me the sweats right now. That's, I know. that's how, <laughs> Sorry, I'm sure but how stressed it made me. Like, oh, but <laughs> when, did, when did you replace your salary? That Because that's a big milestone as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah, probably November. I'm saying, I think I yeah surpassed my my salary. So man, pretty incredible, right? Like a year in, a that, bit it's, the better part of. It's good going for a year in because so you've got your like your specialism, and mm -hmm. you know you've got your you you're getting your processes and you've learned you're learning on the job. Kind of mm -hmm. stuff that me and you're working on now is how do we free you up with a virtual assistant? How do we, how do we get that person doing a lot of your sourcing while you're sleeping? How can we like charge this up? So, you know, when you do bring, uh, sorry, when you bring in recruiters, are you thinking of bringing them in remotely or are you thinking of bringing them in locally? Well, it's probably in part remote to be honest, because I think with some of the roles that we're getting through now, which is awesome there across Australia. So I've really got to start looking at some of those sort of other, you know, centers like the Brisbane, the Melbourne, Perth. I would love to have someone with me in Sydney, to be honest, because I just, yeah. you know, it'd just be nice to have someone to talk to. <laughs> what about what about your wee local outback village that you're in? Could you, like, would, would you not like to be a local employer there? Would that not be something? That yeah, I, I mean, there there is a, like, there's co-working spaces here, so it's not totally, like, yeah. you know, hillbilly, but... <laughs> I guess it's what's happened, obviously, through the uh, pandemic is just that a lot of people sort of left Sydney or the capital cities and, and, you know, done these tree changes or sea changes. So you're finding a lot more professionals, you know, um, within, yeah. you know, certain areas. And, and where I am is quite a significant, I guess, hub from, from a regional perspective. You know, to have its own airport that flies into Sydney, like, you know, that's, that's kind of a big deal, you know, for a country town, to be yeah. fair. Yeah, I guess they could. Part of it's been that since moving here, just sort of seeing that there's some opportunity here as well. And I guess I'll sort of, I'll look at that. But I'll, if we go back to where I had value in my niche, it's, you know, that real insurance being quite, well, the claims management and insurance. I just think like this place is probably screaming out for a labor hire company, if I'm honest, but it's not my bag, mate. Like I wouldn't do it well. And these it are would just costing money. These are, these are the things. People see opportunities and then they take their eye off the ball. Like mm. it's much, it would make much more sense just to double down in this space that you're in. And if you max it out amazingly, which you won't, mm. if you did, maybe you look at it, like maybe you take on an insurance client in New York 
or like mm. as long as you're in the same niche it yeah, you know, yeah it all works better the marketing works better the systems work better it's when you start getting scattered i'm i'm a i'm a man for a new idea too so i i, I don't know yeah i mean it's just sort of i think in with age and, and what experience like I've, I've definitely learned the hard way and sometimes and you know run a couple of businesses my well of previous and being with the partnership and one was okay but one was a freaking shocker and you know just like knowing where your strengths are and mine is with, with you know the claims management particularly from where i've been doing for like 15 years like that's where i can add value and i like i genuinely am interested in it and when do you think you'll be feel like you're strong enough in your subject matter expertise to be able to do that or do you feel like Maybe you just bring in an experienced people and use your previous management experience. Yeah, see, that's, I don't think I'm ever going to feel comfortable enough to be able to sort of, I guess, train someone in recruitment. So I guess that part, I really love an experienced recruiter. I think my ability to train someone up in what I know, I feel very comfortable. And that's something that I had to do for many years prior, you know, to doing this. I think it just, you know, that old adage of, you know, you know, if I'm the smartest person in the room, then, you know, we're in trouble, basically. And um, I think it's bringing in people that obviously add value and, and have different skill sets. It, there's true. There's a couple of strands of thought here. One, you probably find better salespeople in the insurance industry that you could make into a recruiter. Yeah, um, that's true. Time in the saddle in recruitment beyond two, three years doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be better. The learning tends to slow down. And their output, their output turns not as high. You, yeah, you usually find there's a reason that companies go for people with no experience or little experience, and then they build around it. Again, it depends what type of. What type of yeah, you're doing. exactly right, though. And it's just like I've always found at times when you you know hiring people with experience, there's some form of baggage, right? Or that or they're yeah. tired, or they're running away from something, and not usually running to something. And we see, I see a lot of my competitors and obviously just lots of guys in recruiting in general just doing, you know, bringing new people in. Like there's a chap that was in our Mastermind One, you know, uh, Mr. Lugson, and he's just bringing in a lot of, like he's got it obviously a bit of a balance, but he's bringing some, you know, fresh blood and, and you know, he's really his, uh, believes in obviously his process and, and trying to build that, you know, those people up. He came into, he came into even the, the Mastermind though with a, a good background in, yeah. personally he has like, he has commercial investors. Secondly, he has a billing, he is a billing manager. So like that, there's a good depth of knowledge and process yeah. that he can bring in. And he has the skill set to be able to go, okay, four rookies, right. Here's how we do it. Make it happen. Yeah, yeah. No, there's not many who, who could do that because they either are people who are just like too focused on their own billings and they don't have that. Or yeah, they yeah. Ill enough, and they're just that. So he's got a nice blend. So I'm not surprised that he's done so. Yeah, well. yeah, and he's obviously so yeah, seen huge growth. I, I think when you compare, obviously, in the same group, but it's um, yeah, yeah, it's I mean, it's a, it's an interesting one, and I think like even the VA and this and the procrastination, ineffectively, probably it's taken you know three months to you know also to get to this point, is just been like the fear of like oh my gosh like. Can I, am I can I adequately train this person and you know give them direction in recruitment or, or you know in the aspects of it? Um, again, going to that imposter syndrome or just you know the fear or not feeling that I'm I'm strong enough for. I think well, you have us to to help you on that, but the the other yeah, bit, that's right. I think like a VA is a free swing at a hire. Like the, the cost difference yeah, that's... that on a senior hire in Australia is one fifth, maybe. Um, yeah, I'd say so. So. You know, you'll see the progression in that person and you'll get better at what that looks like from da a daily, weekly way of work. Mm. So it does help you in that. And I think as soon as you set in rules for people when you're managing them and you follow it and you follow a system, you know, there's not, I don't know, I, I wouldn't overcomplicate yeah. the amount like that. No, that's very true. And I think a lot of people do that, right? I think they obviously know that they overthink it or they just, you know, I, I think we've talked about with VAs over time. It's just like you're just giving them structure and, you know, being very clear on expectations and you give them good direction and, and it should just like play itself out, right? Unless they're not the right person. Yeah. Look, you have 60 hours a week. 
if you're lucky, right? <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of now, me and you have young kids, we don't do work 60 hours a week, right? It's uh, <laughs> like I, I'm 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 dragged everywhere, right? But if my business wasn't running in the background, I'd be in a lot of trouble. So you have to think yeah. like you have a podcast that's out there and you're able to like systemize that to build a community or build like or use it as part of your business development process then that's a system that's working for you in the background if yep. you have a va that is sourcing for you and coordinating for you and doing all of that and working your diary then you also have a system that's going to save you 30 30 hours a week so your time gets multiplied and maybe you start making a bit more money and you're like, okay, who's that marketing person that can do all my, my stuff yeah. as Americans call it and get all my, my content going. And then, Oh, what about my back office stuff? I've got a few times, right? Okay. Let's give that away. If you start holding on to the admin stuff that somebody else could do for like $8 an hour, mm. like what are you worth an hour? That's why I always, yeah, that's exactly right. And again, that's probably been something I've been holding on to a lot too, just like, you know, from, you know, creating the profiles and, you know, but I, I guess I've just, admin in, as well. yeah, but in part is, is also for me to, was to learn the process, yeah. you know, and, and sort of, I guess, feel that I understood what the, you know, the, what 360 recruitment was, is all about. Yeah. Uh, but definitely getting to a point where I'm just, I don't have the capacity, you know, and I need to, to grow, to, to, for the business to grow. Otherwise it will just stay like this and, I'll get increasingly frustrated. And so it's accountability time before we wrap up. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we, we touch base in a year's time. Where's your business going to be at? So that's a good question. Not that I one I'm really prepared for, but I think I would ultimately, I probably want to triple my billings this year, okay. uh, which, you know, is not probably crazy to a lot of people, but that's, that's where I'd like to be. I guess that. Um, what does that mean for headcount? So. I think it actually only probably means maybe two to three VAs and possibly one or two recruiters, to be honest. I don't think that's like, I guess that, yeah, it's a tough one because the reality is that the first three to six months for any recruiter I bring on yeah. is obviously going to be a learning curve. And the reality is that, you know, you've spoken about before is that, you know, usually one recruiter is doing well, one's neutral and one's probably losing you money. Yeah. But depending, obviously, if I bring a couple at the same time, which might be better than, stagnating and i'm not sure but um, i think i think when we get to that point we'll have a look at where your finances are where your mm. uh, where your desk is at and when you start going into like the ideal hire it we need to work out firstly like what what is the profile of what we're after and we're hiring to achieve the financial goals we're not just hiring for the sake of for the sake of it so like, yeah yeah that's right we'll come up with a score mechanism in terms of like do you, like this is the criteria that works for Jimmy to be able to get to his goals. Mm. And then you then you start running the process, and it might be two people without experience who come from your industry. And yeah. Then we have to look at okay, well, if that's the case, what type of training do they need? What type of management structure do they need? Or it might be you might find one person who's got a bit more billing management experience than you do. And you think, okay, that one person, then everybody else comes from industry. We need to work out what that looks like as part of a broader plan. And mm -hmm. I think to, to get to triple your billings with two VAs and one senior hire is possible. But then the VA, you might be able to get somebody who could be a revenue generator as a VA. So yeah, like I, I think in the Philippines, there's some amazing senior talent that that can be can be transitioned in but again you have to decide do you want the office locally do you want the person remotely because again that's going to define the type of profile and management structure yeah that's right that's right and uh, yeah and i think some of us we have to talk through and i think you you know the idea of bringing people in from within industry experience i guess across different claims would be fantastic all right because that kind of obviously that's I guess where I come from, and that's sort of, I guess, from the, you know, that's what I love about the value proposition of, of Pryor and Hall, you yeah. know, that we're, we're from within this industry um, and we, and that's how we add our value. So. Yeah. It's the way to, I don't know, from a marketing branding perspective, it all makes sense, but then you have to mm -hmm. have like, how do I get that 
marginal gains recruitment mindset into that system yeah. if, if you're not the person who really like no that's right yeah. and it would need some sort of structured training probably to be honest and not not for me <laughs> no I, I, no but even even me i'm i like to do the sales stuff and i like to do a bit of one-on-one like player coach stuff but i don't really like management as such so like i think that's probably like charlotte has to come in and fill that gap because i'm yeah i'm off like barking and howling at the, <laughs> howling at the, at the moon like you know so. look there squirrel yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right so one year from now we're going to triple revenue we are going to get a couple of vas and a senior hire but we have to work out what direction this is all yeah. good stuff i think that's us today my friend well, mate, well, thanks for having me, mate. I can't believe actually I've, uh, obviously you're scraping the barrel, but I'm, I'm very chuffed to have been on your, uh, on the podcast finally. It's, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> well, no, it's just great to have been able to be around your painting fences to <laughs> talking about, talking about making over half a million in a year's time. Like that's a, yeah. for me, that's a transformational bit. And it's, uh, as you were part of that first group that we did, it's mm. a real pivotal moment in what we do as a business. And it was just just nice to be able to tie it all together. So uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Uh, no, mate, thanks for having me. And uh, and thanks for the support. You know, generally, it's just a, I'm enjoying the ride, mate. And, um, and obviously continues, uh, hopefully continues, obviously, in, in the current trajectory.